it's 5.30 and we're all here. So we'll go ahead and call the select board meeting for Wednesday, April 14th, 2021 to order. And uh, the usual reminders, this meeting is being recorded. Um, in attendance is Amy Parsons, myself, David Phil, Jane Nevin-Smith, uh, John Muskevitz, and Joyce Chunglo. And all votes will be taken via roll call vote. And first, uh, we'll do a select board reorganization. I know it's down on the list there, but that should be the first thing. Um, let's see, 6.2 on the agenda. And first, congrats to uh, Amy on her, uh, her election and congrats to Joyce on her re-election. So I know, I, congratulations, Amy, and welcome to the board. Uh, you all did me in numbers. I guess my constituents are dying and yours aren't. So, I mean, that's how it goes, right? <laughs> We don't have four on one this year. Last year, I think there was a lot because there was like four people going for one spot. This right. year it was uncontested. <laughs> well, congratulations. I'll take it. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, first order of business is uh, we need a chair and a clerk for the select board. And then we'll also do the um, liaison positions next. So we need a nomination for chair first. Um, I'm going to make a motion for David to be chair again this coming year. Um, he just got his feet wet and I think one more year and then I would certainly like to offer it to Jane for next year. Okay. And so need a, a second. I'll <laughs> Was that a yes? I can barely hear you, John. Yes, I'll second it. Okay, so motion by Joyce and a second by John. Any discussion on that? Well, I would like to be chair, so can I talk about it now? Sure. Okay, it's been my observation that the chair rotated each election cycle unless there were extenuating circumstances. It takes every new chair takes a year to get his feet wet, but they've been in the position and they've been on the board watching what goes on. And the role of the select board is to set policy for the town. The board is guided in its meetings by the and its decisions by the chair. The town benefits from having different leadership styles and mine will be different from David's and, Dave and mine will be different from the person who follows me. I have a track record of organizing and getting large projects done for the town. And I look forward to using my knowledge and skills to lead this board. Okay. Anything else from the board? You know, I, David, you've only been on for a year and really you're, me and you are up next year for election again. So this would be your your term per se. Uh, so that's that's why I'm kind of going with you. You've done a good job so far over the past few months here. So I'd just like to see it continue. But so okay. the board, whatever they feel. All right. Do you want to explain why you want to stay? Sure. I'd love, love to. So um, <laughs> as uh, you know, I, I came into the chair position uh, once uh, COVID was kind of underway. And, you know, we've had uh, the unified going with emergency management uh, uh, folks and, uh, you know, Chief Spanknable, uh, Chief Mason, uh, Board of Health, uh, Carolyn, et cetera. And, um, so I'd just like to continue working with that group as we kind of round out COVID hopefully later this year. And, you know, hopefully we'll have a chance to operate normally as a board. Um, I'd like to see eventually in-person meetings. Obviously that's probably gonna be a, a while out still, but um, you know, we've got a lot of projects that we need to, need to finish up and a lot of things that I'd like to see through. So um, we're, we're slowly, you know, we're getting there. We got the buildings done. And uh, now I think a lot of our projects are, how do we maintain those buildings and how do we evolve as a town as far as hiring, staffing, 
pay, things along those lines that we've started to dig into, but really haven't yet. So. And again, I say, you know, you are much more likely to run for re-election than I am, given my age. And I think you'll have ample chance to be chair again. Um, and every, every board has a huge list every year of things they do and don't do and things that need to be accomplished and aren't finished. Okay. And I think, I think it would be better for the town to have alternatives constantly changing so that they, everything is, you know, a new, new ideas get thrown in all the time from different people. Okay. Anybody else before we vote on that? So I'm new. So I just don't know um, how is it kind of been in the past, like not just like the last five years, but I guess like the last like decade or so, how does it typically go? We have had, I'll speak to that because I've been on the board the longest. Um, we have had chairs in the past um, do two years at a time. We had John Connor, uh, Guilford did two years. Uh, Molly did two years. So, I mean, there's been a history of people doing two years at a time. Um, and that was of the uh, support of the board to have that happen. Um, so that's, we have had it in the past and I'm only going back you know, a few, few years, maybe 10 or more, um, that that has happened. So it's not unusual. Um, I was chairman of the school committee for about four or five years uh, out of my 15. So, I mean, it all depends on what the makeup of the board and, and the wishes of the board. So um, that's been what has happened throughout my career. Um, so that's what I'm looking at. So All right, so. Don't worry. Could, if, if Joyce gets sick of them at any time, I'm sure she'll make the motion to vote them out. <laughs> right, Joyce? Oh, David and I have had conversations for sure. <laughs> As I do with everybody. I mean, I don't particularly pinpoint him, but you, you all know that I have, uh, um, I'm not in a position right now that I would want the chair of the board because I have other things uh, on my plate, as some of you know. So, um, you know, I just had a stress test. So I'm good with that. I want to say I'm good around. My heart's good. So you still got me for a while. I'm not going to pass out on you. But, um, you know, there are uh, things that I need to get done around me. I'm going to go be going part time eventually, maybe next January. So um, this is my last stint, I'll say, as, as even on the board. So my three years being just elected, I'm going to try and get done as much as I can within the next three years. And I don't necessarily have to be chair to do that because if you have a good working relationship with other board members, you get things done and it doesn't have to be, uh, we all contribute to uh, our different parts of the organizations that we support and do. And um, so we're just like a team member and I think it's worked well in the past and I'd like to see that continue, so. There's nothing else. Jennifer, could you roll call? Roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? No. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, next we need to nominate a clerk. Uh, whoever what does the clerk do? takes over when the chairman is not available and does have to sign some other documents um, that is required of the town clerk. So if you would like that position, Jane, I'm more than happy to nominate you for that position. That'd be fine. I'll, sec oh, I'll let somebody else second. <laughs> Anybody I'll on? Second. I'll second, second that. Amy, okay. Motion by Joyce, second by Amy. Any discussion on that? No. All right, Jennifer. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, next is. Uh, can we just, 
can we just take a minute, David, and do thank the uh, public that did come out and vote or did absentee? Uh, I know we had a low turnout for non-contested races uh, this this time, but um, all those that did show their support and did come out to vote uh, is certainly appreciated. You always have that right, and it can't be taken away from you. So. Um, please always extend that right to yourself that you can vote. So thank you to everybody that did come out and support their candidates that they did. And it worked well at the senior center again. Uh, I mean, yes. it was in and out of there in a minute. So it was great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good flow. Um, do we have, Jennifer, is there the list of uh, liaison spots? Um. There's not a list. It, there's just a show the just what's on the website. Okay. Um, and I, uh, I can share that with y'all. I can pull it up and share it on the computer. Um, That'd be good. Or, okay. Hold on one second and give me just a moment to pull it up. While you're doing that, um, we can start talking if there's any preferences, any departments that uh, people would prefer to keep or get rid of or whatever, as far as liaisons. I was thinking that Amy, I don't know her choices, but might be interested in doing both education and library since she's the one with the youngest kids. But that's up to her. She has any kids. I don't um, have kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> But someday. Right, <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to see you slip something in on me this past year. <laughs> it's been kind of hard to hide. <laughs> but no, uh, no kids yet. Um, but I would be interested in the liaison to the school board. Great. And Jane, you, you previously had that, correct? Right. So I thought I could do... Uh, general government that Christian did. Okay. I'd like to keep my police and fire. I have a few uh, fires that I still need to put out. So shall we say um, we still have some things that are uh, coming in, uh, especially with the police and the new regulations and things like that, that we're working on uh, that's been mandated by the state. And also the fire department, um, which I want to do some presentation, not tonight, um, but um, ambulance and things of that nature where we, I would like to see us head within the next year uh, to year and a half anyway. And I would like to keep rolling with that to um, uh, expand on our ambulance service and things of that nature with the fire department. Well, let's do this. If uh, someone could make a motion for Joyce to keep uh, the police and fire, because there's no change there, um, that would be good. We'll check that one off and then we'll keep going. I'll move the we uh, Joyce do police and fire liaison. Okay. Can we get a second? I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion on that one? Uh, lots of roll calls tonight, Jennifer. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm in good form. I'm ready for this. All right. Uh, roll call vote. Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. We're and Parsons. Back to Amherst. Say that again, John. We're sending the ambulance back to Amherst. Save some money. <laughs> um, we're hoping to expand and make money. So far, we've made money off of our ambulance. So, uh, it's more than having to pay out to Amherst. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it down the road. All right. So that was all eyes. Thank you. Okay, great. Hi. Uh, so I also had the master building committee, which uh, we've kind of been dormant um, for a little while. And I think because of all of COVID and things of that nature, we did lose one of the chairs, David uh, Tudrin resigned for, uh, his work related um, things, which was a big loss to that committee. But um, I think we need to get back active with that again, too. So um, I certainly don't mind continuing with that if we can get things reorganized and give me some names and numbers where I can see where we can get moving on what we need to move on to. And actually getting uh, that could be another part of another meeting is seeing 
uh, what we need to do, um, what our thoughts are on the select board on what direction we want the uh, master building committee to go to go into um, this coming year. Okay. Any objections to Joyce keeping that spot? No. Should we vote on that one as well, probably? Just to be safe? Didn't that have a different name? Wasn't it called the... Uh, municipal. Capital. No. It's the municipal. municipal Building Committee. Thank, Thank you. you. Master Municipal. It's all the same thing, girls. <laughs> M, you got an M in there. <laughs> I've had a hard day. Bear with me. <laughs> Could I get a motion for Joyce to keep that, please? I move that she keeps it. Okay. Second. All right, motion by Amy, second by Jane. Uh, Jennifer, roll call. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Um, get mine out of the way, if you don't mind, that's pretty quick, I think. I'd like to keep uh, DPW, and then I had, um, well, Amy, you may want this, but I had uh, agricultural uh, committee, and uh, if if you don't want it, I'd like to keep it. But if you if you want it, that's okay too. That's fine. You can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> what does it do, David? Say again. What does the agricultural commission do? Well, so uh, Matt Kushai was working on uh, getting the right to farm signs up there and raising awareness of you know Hadley as an agricultural committee. Um, Let me bring and then uh, I, oh no. oh she's talking to someone else um, and then during non-COVID times they do events to promote agriculture uh, they were always involved in um, like the Memorial Day Parade uh, helping out with that uh, things along those lines Asparagus Festival and all, all that mm -hmm. yeah so not, not a whole lot, unfortunately, since COVID, but hopefully that'll change. So. David, can I just, um, an observation, uh, one of the committees does not have a liaison and that's conservation. Jennifer, we're, Jennifer and I were reviewing the list and I don't know if that's not, if it's that you don't have a liaison for that or if that. I was liaison. I think there is a liaison. I was liaison. Or, I didn't know that. Okay, so, sorry about that. We I didn't have it on the list, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah, I, I got a couple of questions about conservation anyway now. All right, hold on, one thing at a time. <laughs> no, 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 no. I sat through that whole meeting and you backed out of it and Caroline backed out of it. So you're gonna listen for a couple minutes. Um, they, uh, they, got, they got a little procedure problem that, uh, Caroline, we really need to notify them about the state laws through COVID and, and how they need to uh, run their meetings. So, and as you said, I had spoke to you about it, maybe all refresh all the boards with what they need to do during their meetings would be a, would be a good idea. Yeah, we can do that. We can send out a uh there's definitely enough literature to walk through each committee or board on how to follow it according to the COVID regulations for doing an on, uh, a Zoom meeting. Is that it, John? You good? No, that's it for now. Okay. Are there other, I think Mass Municipal Association has guidelines for what each different uh, town committee does. Maybe we should all get copies of each committee should get a copy of what their see the what mass municipal association thinks that we ought to be doing just to make yeah. sure we're not missing something I, I was reading through the beacon do the rest of the uh, boards get the beacon too or just the board of selectmen uh, it's we mostly the board of selectmen and then some uh offices in town hall like the collector the clerk the treasurer also get it okay you know, maybe that'd be a good place for them to start to keep up with with some of the changes that's going that are going on all the time. You know, uh -huh. at least send it to the chairman of each board. 
So we also have the committee, the capital planning committee. And I believe Christian has said that he would stay on that, correct, for this year? And we had voted on that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Just want to cover that. Could I get a motion to uh, for DPW liaison agricultural for me? And then also uh, we can add Christian to stay on as capital committee, please. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce. Second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalu? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. So now. Uh, Wait, Amy had said education. Let's. Yep. Vote Would, on that. Uh, I, I just wanted to make sure that uh, between the three of you, there was, there was quite a bit of shuffling around for the department. So I just wanted to do those individually. Um, uh, Amy, you wanted the schools and was there something else? Um, I can do park and rec if John would allow me to do so. Sure, I, I just got started with them and they're just getting back in the swing of things, you might say, uh, with the springtime and the kids' programs, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, actually, uh, they just sent me a, emailed me a bunch of stuff. I'll, I'll email it to you. They've got a bunch of questions that they're going to yeah. need answered. So I had uh, talked to Jim Shea, he actually called me um, the other day also um, to let me know where they were. And Amy, I can fill you in. They're looking at using fields up in North Hadley behind the uh, new sub fire station. So I'll fill you in on that also. Okay. Could you share, if Jennifer has your number, can I get her number from you so I can share with you and I can text you or email you? Yes. Is she on our town email, Jen? Yes, Amy was added today and y'all all got an email looping you all in together. Oh, okay, so I can. I can send you an email, Amy, on what Jim has said to me. Okay. 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 All right. So motion to uh, have Amy be the liaison for the school department and park and rec, please. Still moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce. Second by Jane. Jennifer. Roll call vote. Phil. Yes. Chungalu. Yes. Nevin Smith. Yes. Wiskevitz. Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you. All right. And then, so Jane, uh, you want general government and you had conservation, you said. Anything uh, else? Human services, which is um, COA. So that's seems reasonable to keep. Right. And now is library and human services or not? I think uh -huh. under the current list, it's separate. Okay. Because Christian had the library and you had uh, you had cultural and human both. Okay. So did you want to add the library to your long list or? Um, I think that would be good if someone else had it just because of. Yeah, I mean, I get where, where we are. Okay. I don't, really, I don't think I'm going to have any conflicts with the library. So. Okay. All right. So, John, you want the veterans and media and library? Yeah, yeah, I guess they can contact me. You know, just because we're the liaisons, we still bring all this information back to the rest of the board, you know? Correct. You, Joyce, I, you know, I've been talking to Melissa and Steve and, you know, so every, as long as the communications is open through all these departments. I think Jim actually sent you most of the materials anyway, John. He was just retouching base with me because I had touched out to him. Um, okay. Well, it's, it's from the uh, Melissa, so. Okay. But I'll, I'll get it over to Amy and actually I'll send it to all of you. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Yeah. Right. So a uh, motion to have Jane be the liaison for general government, human and cultural services and conservation. And then am I forgetting anything else, Jane, or is that it? That's it. Okay. And then also for John to be the liaison for uh, veterans, Hadley Media, and the library. So moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joe, second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. 
Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. Now that that's all. Wait, wait, we didn't give Amy enough jobs. Oh, she needs more jobs? No. She's got the school and uh, something else. Park and rec. That's enough to keep her busy for a while. Yeah, school and park and rec. Park and rec. Okay. We can make up one for her. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're good with that, we'll go back. Uh, now that the reorganization's out of the way, we'll we'll hit our consent agenda and, and, and move on with the regular meeting business. So I have warrants PR2121, AP2141, AP2141S, AP2142, AP2142S, Minutes from March 31st, 2021, Agricultural Commission appointment for Wally Sikowski. And that's it. It's so moved. Second. All right. Motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chunglo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is 3.1 on the agenda, public comments, uh, maximum of 15 minutes. Please limit your comments to three minutes or less. Anybody here for public comments, please turn on your camera or wave your hand, your digital hand so we can see you. Okay, last call. All right, we'll keep on moving. Uh, well, we had a 545 appointment. We kind of missed that, but that's okay. Uh, change, change of manager for the American Legion. It's 5.1 on the agenda. Jennifer, do you want to talk about that? Absolutely. Um, the American Legion um, has held elections and they have a new manager, Richard Bukowski. Bukowski. Bukowski, yep, Bukowski. is yep. going to be the new manager of the American Legion. I think it changes with their presidents in their election. So they're asking for y'all to approve a change of manager for him. So moved. I, okay. I think it's called commander. But... Sorry. Commander. They, they have a new commander and he wants to be the manager of the bar too. But this is for ABCC purposes, the liquor manager, right? Not a. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Is that what I had? Okay. Jennifer? <laughs> Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. And they were entertaining. Can I just interject here for a minute? They were inter um, thinking about um, having a Memorial Day parade this year. Um, they haven't got the go ahead from the Board of Health but they were wondering and how we went, might support them if they did a vehicle um, parade uh, where people wouldn't have to necessarily be next to one another. But even if you were marching, you could put your mask on. So that really wouldn't be quite a health issue. They are still going to have uh, the ceremony at the Legion and raising the flag and the gun salute and the, of that nature, like they did last year. Um, so I'll, I, I, John, I don't know if you or uh, you would like me to be in contact with uh, uh, Richard Bukowski, who's the commander, uh, to see where they're at with that, because we are now coming into April and not too far away from uh, Memorial Day. So uh, yeah. I'd like to help them out any way that we could. Yeah. Hey, Jennifer, can you give me their information if the, he has a phone number or something that you have? Just yes. Text, him, text it to me or something and I can give him a call. Okay. Lucy will be on giving us a COVID report later, and we could ask her about the Board of Health and the Memorial Day Parade. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there that they were looking at wanting to, you know, have some support for it. Um, I think if it's done properly, we certainly could uh, support it if it was, you know, masked and whatever. I mean, sure, it's, I know for it. Yeah, I think it would be nice. It would be an elevation of. Uh, spirits if we could get back into doing something so let's let's think about it yep even if it's a small one it would be great 
So there is the uh, Hatfield 350th birthday uh, celebration and parade that the town has been asked to, um, or invited, I should say, to participate in. That's on, I forget whether it's Saturday or Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. And um, I, I know Chief Spanknable said that that was something that, that he wanted to do. And I think that's a good idea as well, since you know our relationship with Hatfield. Um, and I think the Legion was talking about maybe doing something on Monday. I think normally the parade's on Sunday, right? Right. Yeah. So maybe maybe we can do both, but either way, oh, half is holding theirs. So, yeah. Say that again, John. What, John? I said it all depends on the weather anyway, but yeah, if, if they're on separate days, it should, should be all right to get them both in. Yeah, that'd be good. I'd like to participate in Hatfield. They did in ours, so. Yeah. And they got the go-ahead from their board of health, it sounds like, so hopefully we can follow the same guidelines. I guess we'll see. That'll be good. Okay. As long as we don't double book, I think that's, you know, let's not plan for the same day. And if we're, we already know what they're doing, it's a good thing. All right. Yeah. Uh, Carolyn, do you want to hit the administrative report now or do you want to wait? No, I can do it real quick. Um, so since last week, still working on the budget, the warrant, and I'll talk a little bit about that later on when we um, vote on when you vote on the warrant. Uh, continue to work with the finance team, looking at revenues and anticipated revenues for next year. Uh, the partial opening of the town hall continues to go really well. We're getting settled and unpacked and getting organized. And I just I want to thank uh, all of the employees in the town hall who were very patient with this shuffling around and getting different furniture for um, safety issues. Um, they've been extremely patient and I just wanna thank them. And a special thanks to Gary Berg for his assistance. He really helped a lot with that, as well as Jennifer coordinating that. So uh, the site visit for North Hadley Village Hall went very well. There were about three um, interested parties and the realtor has done some additional showings privately. Um, and our new administrative assistant, Stacy Sullivan, uh, is sharing her time between DPW and the treasurer that began this week. And um, I think that's just a good example of trying to find efficient and cost saving ways, ways to assist two different departments. Um, so that's, I think that's gonna work out really well. And, and just so the public knows that non-binding question regarding the annual election date, that permanent change that did pass um, at the election. So it will be on the warrant. And a reminder to the public uh, that the town meeting is scheduled for Saturday, May 22nd at 1 p.m. And if it rains uh, that day, it'll be Sunday, May 23rd at the same time. So quick update, but budget time. And is it going to be at Hopkins Academy again? Yes. yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. So we have uh, 6.1 Nexam pilot amendment. And... Um, I had some questions about what a pilot agreement is. It's payment in lieu of taxes. And my understanding is that for people watching, instead of the solar company paying a massive amount of taxes on their solar array right away, they get to spread the payments out more evenly over a larger number of years. So the town gets a more steady stream of revenue instead of one big chunk of money at the beginning. Is that mostly right, Carolyn? Actually, Chris is here from Nexam. Okay. He, might, he might do a good job of explaining that. Good evening, folks. Uh, Chris Clark from Nexamp. Uh, my colleague, Dale Eddy, is also on. So um, you may call on her, uh, depending on how hard the questions get. But as for your question, yeah, the, the pilot, essentially what it does is it levelizes the tax liability for the project over the 20 year life of the solar project. So. For you folks, it provides uh, revenue certainty. Uh, for the project owner, it provides uh, certainty around tax liabilities over the lifetime of the project and uh, facilitates financing of the solar project. Okay. And so what, what are you asking us to amend this evening? Right, so Nexamp has uh, actually three different solar projects in Hadley. Um, the, the project we are speaking about tonight is the one off of Route 9 uh, behind the target. It's a project uh, that went live a couple of years ago. 
And for that project, uh, we added battery, or we are in the process of adding battery storage to that project. Um, we've been approved by the planning board, the conservation commission, fire chief has looked at the plans to add that storage to the project. We're going through some minor modifications now uh, with those groups, uh, but we are going through uh, you know, permanent financing for that project. And as part of that, we wanna make sure that the battery storage is uh, incorporated into the current pilot agreement, which does not mention storage. It only contemplates the solar array. So effectively what we're looking to do is amend the pilot agreement uh, with the town for that project, which actually consists of a Northern array and a Southern array. So it's two pilots for that single project. Uh, to increase our payment to the town annually to account for the battery. So, you know, just for background, this approach is consistent with what we have done uh, in other communities where we are adding batteries to our solar projects. Um, and just for reference, under the current agreements for this project, uh, for the north and south arrays, the project pays uh, $7,000 per megawatt per year or about uh, $32,000 per year. What we're proposing is an amendment that would increase that amount by $1,000 per megawatt per year, or the total payment on an <clears throat> annual basis to the town uh, on the order of about $4,600. So that's a summary of uh, what we're looking to do. This is something that we were working with David Nixon on uh, before he retired and uh, the new town administrator, Carolyn, has inherited this. Um, I would just also add for reference, uh, we just entered into a similar pilot agreement with uh, another town uh, in central Massachusetts, the town of Douglas, uh, where we amended the pilot uh, to add a battery. That one was slightly smaller uh, in terms of the amount of the increase. That was at $750 per megawatt, but you know, that's just kind of a frame of reference, I would say, uh, you know, across the state where we're looking to do this. Uh, we're generally in that range of 750, 750 to $1,000 per megawatt. And it also has a uh, annual escalation. 2% increase. Okay. So how, what's the timeline? Like how long? The, the lifetime of the project and the lifetime of the current agreement is 20 years. So are we adding, are we starting the 20 years when we resign it or are we going from when it started? The amendment would be uh, from this point forward. So for another, add of like three years or two years, whatever we are. Out of uh, the, the pilot agreement began when the project went operational. I don't know offhand that exact date, but you know, we're, we're probably looking at 18 to 19 years uh, under the current um, May 3rd, 2017, is that correct? Uh, that could be right, yeah. Um, I'd like to ask Dan what what he thinks in, of this number financially for the town, and um, if we can. Uh, I think it, it fits in with what, what they're paying other communities and what other communities are getting for this. They're adding batteries. I'm not sure what the safety aspect of it, that's something you'd probably want to talk to the fire chief on, but I think for... For the town, we'd end up getting about $4,600, like you said, a year additional. That would go up 2% a year for the next, I think it's 17 or 18 years. Okay. 16 years, yeah. Yeah. So have they put that online now, that particular array or not? The solar array is operational. The okay. battery uh, has not been constructed yet. Okay. And are they acid batteries or is there containment for them? Or how, what, what do you guys do with that? Yeah, they're uh, lithium iron lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate batteries. Typically, they're fully contained. Uh, this system has been vetted through the fire chief from a safety standpoint. Any other questions before we uh, move? I can get a motion to approve this, please. So moved. Uh, all right, I'll give uh, I'll give it that one to Amy. That was kind of a tie. <laughs> I gotta get a second. <laughs> I'll second then. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, second by Jane. Jennifer. Will call vote Phil? Yes. Chunglu? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes, if they update exhibit B in the attachment. Do. It doesn't say anything on it. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's missing missing a page, blank page. So, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. All right. Have a good night. You too. Thanks, Chris. All right. Um, let's see. Let's do. Um, let's do appointment of town collector eight point one Sue Blawaski. There she is. Oh, shoot. She, she's in the shadows there, so. <laughs> Clearly. Sorry. <laughs> Incognito tonight. <laughs> Only the shadow knows. <laughs> so tell us. Uh, I guess give us some backstory about how you went from elected to appointed and this is this your first actual appointment versus uh, being elected right here? Yes, because um, you couldn't appoint me while I was elected. Here I am today, you got a free day. Um, <laughs> um, Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> But stop, Mark. <laughs> Did you hear my husband? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So you need to take a vote to um, appoint me. And actually, Dan Zadonik said um, they never took a vote to appoint you. Um, so I went up and said to Carolyn, hey, do I have a job tomorrow? <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> I've been hanging around for 15 years, so uh, well, I guess it's hoping, unanticipated. <laughs> you're hoping for some more free days before you caught on, but. <laughs> I, I the think glitch. you better hurry before she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so I move we appoint Susan as our collector. Yeah, I'll second it. Town collector. Town collector. Second. So motion by Jane, second by John. And so this is uh, something that started, I think long before I joined the board and, and Christian joined the board where we were moving to a more professional town staff where we wanted to make sure that both the treasurer and the collector had some qualifications and it just wasn't a popularity contest or it just wasn't somebody kind of, you know, wandering in from the street and taking over and not knowing what they're doing. So uh, we had to vote at town meeting. We had to get special legislation done through the state legislature to make this, these two uh, positions appointed rather than elected. So I think this is finally the end of the process, right? It um, is. All right. Uh, so if anybody doesn't have anything else, uh, Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Wiskevitz? Yes. Parsons? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Okay. All right. And then we'll move on to COVID-19. Is uh, Dr. Moser coming tonight? Does anybody know? She's coming. I just texted her that we'd be ready for her soon. Okay. Well, then we'll skip that and we'll come back. Uh, let's do 9.1, annual report dedication and, and Fred Oakley Award. Jennifer, you wanted some more nominations or some nominations. I would like some nominations. Um, but, you know, and if people could just email them to me to info at hadleyma.org. Um, I would ask that you email them to me as soon as possible. Um, the 28th is your next meeting. And honestly, I will be hustling like you would not believe to get a report dedicated to someone and, and to print at this point. But we just, we just, the nominations aren't coming. Um, please, nominations, info at hadleyma.org. Okay. okay. Did I say please enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> and looks like Dr. Moser's here. Dr. Moser, do you want to give us a quick update on COVID? Uh, sure. Hi, everybody. 
Um, not much new. Uh, cases in Hampshire County are steady at uh, the level that they were in the spring and the fall. Um, a lot more <clears throat> younger um, adults, 40s, 50s, 30s. She go out. And children. Everybody's frozen. Everybody frozen? No. Hello? Just you, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on people. <laughs> Here us, so, Dr. Mosler, while you're here, before you leave, we do have a question about a Memorial Day parade and what the restraints on currently are on having that kind of gathering. Apparently, yes. From what I understand, the parades are not uh, allowed. How is Hatfield getting theirs done 350th? What's that? How is Hatfield able to do their 350th parade on Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't know. I will, um, I'll ask, I'll be on a state meeting on Friday and I will ask them again. Uh, that would be great. If we could follow some guidelines, if, you know, where people aren't going to be on top of one another, but just, you know, doing what we need to do just for some type of celebration after the year we had. I mean, thank you for asking. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I will definitely uh, drive, uh, inquire. Great, not, not so much people involved but uh like the fire trucks and police vehicles and anti-cars and stuff like that uh, more of a drive to through type thing and everybody stick around their cars if they parked on the side of the roads you know what that that sounds reasonable to me um and uh you know people kind of stay apart on the side of the road but you know i don't make the rules let me uh yeah. Let, let me check with the state and uh, I, I will get back to you. Okay. You also asked the question about bands because we have a band that loves to play. Uh, they're in close proximity uh, and they're blowing their horns and stuff. So I'm not sure about that one. Music is allowed outdoors, but the musicians have to be uh, distanced from one another. Yeah. So... Um, well, let us know what you can find out. I will. I will. I'll ask about uh, all of those things. Great. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? No. Sounds good. We're all working towards getting better at this, right? And getting done with it. Well, getting done with it would be great, but uh, sadly, yeah. we're, we're not near there yet. But oh. no. Um, all right, I will, uh, I'll ask the state and I'll get back to you. Thank you. Okay, good night everybody. Right. Good night. Okay, we'll keep moving on. Uh, let's do, Amy's here, uh, FY22 budget update. Amy, do you wanna talk about uh, what the finance committee has been doing? Sure. So uh, we met with, um, Let's see, we met with uh, HR, we met with uh, Council on Aging, uh, Library, and um, Park and Rec. Um, we have two more um, scheduled. The rest of ours are scheduled for next week. Um, I... Um, would like a little guidance from the select board, if you could, on what you're looking for, um, you know, just what your thoughts are. Um, you saw Dan's, Dan's um, a chart, and it was, can you give me some guidance on, are we, because if we go with level service, we're going all the way to the end. And I just want to know, you know, really what's, what's the um, wishes of the select board? Well, I think what we're really looking for is anything that's way out of any, line. Any, any feedback from the select board? And, and, you know, are you really, do you want us to really focus on the level service? Are you looking for us to do more, um, you know, because you don't, where that chart is? I, 
your uh, your connection's a little uh, okay. There, Amy. Just I don't think we're going to find anything way out of line um, because we really were tight the last time. So I don't see things way out of line at all. Um, I just oh, it's not great. Yeah, sorry about that. So, um, well, we'll get back to you next week then, next or in the next select board meeting. Okay. So, okay. Sorry yeah. about that. No, that's okay. It's just you, you're frozen and you, there's a big delay in your audio. And maybe we can, as a select can you, board, can you hear me at all? No. No. Can if we look at the camera? I'll, I'll, if Amy will turn off her camera, she will get better reception and we might be able to understand her a little bit more clearly. Is that, is that a little bit better? Yeah. It is. Oh, that works then. Okay, good. Hey, I like that better anyways. <laughs> so I just wanted to know where the select board, because if I we get it all ready and then we present and the select board really rather wanted us at a different, we're, we're thinking a little bit differently than we were I just wanted to have an idea where you were coming from before, you know, while we're going through this. I'd like the select board, you know, at our next meeting prior to the um, finance committee to take a look at that chart that Dan uh, did. It's very detailed. And I, I think we should pick uh, what we would like to bring forward for this, you know, coming year on what we could do for taxes and what would be uh, feasible and uh, uh, good for the people. So let, I'd like to propose that we take a look at that and, and come back uh, before the before their scheduled time on and we have a discussion on uh, what we would like to present or have uh, go forward with that. Will there be any new information about uh, sources of income in the next couple of weeks. What kind of income? That would be any kind that we could find. Anything that would add to the um, amount the town has to use to meet its obligations. So we're going to continue. We, we Every few weeks, we get more updates on what the revenue is going to be. So you know, with each week, we have a better idea. And so we can continue to um, update the finance committee. And is that looking better? That is, is income increasing or is it lower or what kind of thing are you seeing? Uh, you know, Susan and Linda can help with that, but I sure. think we're doing fine. Yeah, we've okay. just, we have just uh, finished with uh the march uh revenues so we need to take a look at this as a, an internal financial management team uh, but it it just happened so i mean you know we had town hall pulled apart for a couple of weeks so but um i, I think we are going to be in in good shape and I can tell you from collection standpoint, uh, I normally have a dozen uh, or more payment plans now. I have one, I have one this year. And I went and looked through and, and kind of was like, ooh, are they not contacting me? They're paid. And um, I had run into a couple of people who are, our usual payment plan people who are saying to me, you know, um, I got I got the stimulus stuff and I've been taking time to take a look at how I do budgeting and that type of thing and it's working out. So just wanted to throw that out there. But Linda has, uh, Linda has her revenues in, my collections are right on target. Yeah, that's, and then, that's that's good to hear at this time. You know what it we really is. Yeah, yeah, excellent. 
we um, we do have the figures submitted to accountant for revenues, and it's just a matter any any day now we'll be getting that report back and then be able to update those graphs. And I don't think because be, because of the the timing here, um, I don't think you meet for a couple of weeks. I think we should get those reports out to you by email as soon as we're done. So uh, as soon as we're done with them, so you'll see where we stand year to date through March, which is actually the full third quarter. But we know, I think we told you last time when February was looking a little weak that we had some really big ones outstanding, like the five colleges collection that we have on the um, uh, PV, um, uh, on the PVTA system. That did come in. We got the 205,000 in March and, uh, and the motor vehicle was the other one that, was, uh, that wasn't coming in yet. And Susan's and we are also. right on target with that. Those, those came in well. So we're looking forward to that impact on March. Uh, besides that, there uh, we did have um, an increase in the, um, uh, I don't, I'm still not sure what we, what do we call it? The, the state payment on the uh, marijuana. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not the I'm cannabis not, excise. There you go. The, you always struggle with that. Yeah. The, yeah. The drug, the drug the, payment. We got the yeah. payment. It's out of my area entirely. I don't even know what it is. So, um, uh, but yes, that payment did go up for this past quarter. We knew that it would because we only got, we received the first quarterly payment on that three months ago, but we were concerned that it was not full or for a full uh, quarter that it maybe it was only for two or three months. So that went up by uh, $10,000 and a quarter. So we're looking forward to once we get the March revenues that we then reincorporate that into our FY22 projections. And then, then we still have uh, outstanding issues, which I think it's still, still a good idea to plan around um, and, and wait uh, until we have some uh, better information um, on how the, uh, the ARPA funding Mark, is going. Turn it down. So we, we do have some outstanding uh, monies that will be coming in uh, to help. Um, it's not intended as a substitute for raising your own money. I'll, I'll tell you that. Um, so we do have to do our part and, uh, and, and you know, there, there's a judgment call there and something we can talk about later when, we're, when you're at that point of, of uh, having a full, uh, discussion on the taxes. That's something where we hope to bring in some more specific information uh, so that you are well guided in making sure you don't cut below a point where you're jeopardizing um, federal funding into our uh, into supporting Hadley. If we don't support ourselves, they won't help either. It's not meant to be a substitute for uh, taxes, for example. Um, so how do, exactly does that fit in? I'm not saying it's all or not. We, we need to figure that out. And I think over the next few weeks, uh, Jane, you specifically asked, is there more information we'll have over as the weeks go by? Every week we should have better information. So I, I do hope you know, that we just get through the rest of these finance committee hearings and find out what a good budget is and that we then figure out how we put those pieces together, whether what kind of gap we still feel we have at that point and and then then you enter with your you know final decisions as to um whether we're going to find a way to fund that use the taxes or or, or do something else with the budget but i think making those kinds of uh large decisions at this point i feel is is premature mm -hmm. so Linda, what did what did we do with the french street um monies we've got for sale of that property we, we've uh we have put it in as um the the part that was not actually payment of taxes um it ha has just gone to will go to free cash mm -hmm. and um it was well, i think we considered at that point that it was kind of a, a tidy offset to what we had uh what we were not getting in um uh, with a shortfall in um the ambulance rebate so it kind of was an offset for that. Um, it's not the big, you know, under other times, like, you know, two years ago with that kind of a capital influx, we would have set it aside for capital purposes. But right mm -hmm. now we're, we're just getting through. And it wasn't that large an amount that it's going to make that big a difference, whether we use it for operating or. or right. can, you, can, you, can you break down what the taxes were or where? what the money was. Do you have that in front of you or not right now? I don't have it in front of me, but it's actually in the, uh, in the, um, 
that revenues uh, report because it was in through December. Um, tell you what, when I send out the March revenues report, I will break that down. Um, okay. I, my guess is it's something it was, I think it was something like a low, t you know, 20 something to, to high teens difference, mm -hmm. but let, let me get the right figures. I, I hate guessing, especially. No, no, that's okay. Just, just, uh, it's my I really like to get my figures right. <laughs> so you always do. I'm just asking out of curiosity. When I always get in trouble when I guess. So, um, yes, I'll, I will specifically, when we get the March revenues, uh, year to date reports out to you and the finance committee, I'll specifically address that in the email. Okay, Joyce. Okay, great. And get the bill Thank out. you. Thank okay, you. Sure. Mm -hmm. So last year, I know Jennifer prepared a beautiful, you know, ring binder with all the budget stuff in <laughs> that happened this year. And if so, when? Oh, yeah. I'm okay. happy to address that. That's why I called it the, the report that you got is what I call a budget book light. Um, that it was not the, it's not the, all the extensive verbiage that David put in with, at the full explanation. So for going forward, because that was something that David created and he enjoyed doing and he put a lot of time into it. And we're trying to, you know, figure out the best way to use our time. Um, that would actually be a production of taking each of those individual budgets that you have in your 27 page report and, and taking them and lifting them and, and substituting into, into the, uh, into that. I don't know how many, like hundred and something page book of his and then updating each of the paragraphs. What we think what might be a better, um, better use of, of uh, and matches our interests and our abilities is to um, take David's um, book and um, make, make um, the, the explanation sections really won't change that much from year to year. So he has a full section on, on explaining OPEP we'll have that section there and we'll have all the other explanations that he always included there, um, what each department is for, what their, um, you know, their, their game, their, their goals and their functions and all that. We'll keep all of that the same and then have a front section, which will be the equivalent of what you just received. Here's, a, here's the 27 pages of um, our updated, re our revenues, our, expense, our expenditures, our budgets and have that in the front so that we're not doing a complete rewrite every year. So um, we think that's you know, good use of paper, energy, time, and uh, also gives yeah. you an ability to focus right on that front section on the figures. And when you, don't, you, know, when you need a little more explanation, you, you can flip back to that. So I would like to get to that. I don't think you're going to, you're not going to get it in the next couple of weeks. I'm sorry, but it is something that I do. I, do um, I did value that work that he did. There was just not a way that we could pull that off in this time. And then we began to think of whether we really want to do it that way anyways. Thank you. So I know town hall is not going to be happy with me saying this. And Carolyn probably knows what I'm going to say, but um, yeah. I'm not going to support a 6% and, and we don't need to vote on it. We can wait till more information comes in, but I'm not going to support a 6% increase just because we can, and we haven't charged residents in the last few years. Prop two and a half exists for a reason. Um, and in my mind, there should be no reason that we increase taxes on the residents more than two and a half percent in a year, just because we can, it's not the right thing to be doing to the taxpayers. And I understand that the chart shows, well, it's only a few dollars here and there, but you know, everything's going up gas, everything else. So, uh, we don't need to just pile on because we can. So I appreciate what the finance committee is doing, taking a hard look at things. Um, but you know, if we're going to give guidance, I would say my guidance would be don't look at the 6% column on that chart. It's, it's, you're never going to get that vote for me. That's just the way it is. So, and I know you don't want to hear it, but that's, it makes your job harder, but that's just how it is. I had asked for yes, straw, we... straw, straw poll vote and we, we haven't done it. I mean, I, I, I know where I stand on it and I've said it a couple times already, you know. I'm looking at the level of funding and probably 2% or 2.5%. You know, people were pretty happy having a little bit of ease in, in the rest of their bills with this COVID situation we're in, and we're nowhere near out of it right now. Some people are really still struggling pretty bad. Did, did we mention that ARPA funding is $1.5 million? And I really 
caution you and be careful how you speak at this point. We do not want to jeopardize one and a half million dollars because we didn't do our share in the taxes. I'm not saying that we have to raise it that full amount. I'm saying we need to know what that means. If we're not supposed to use federal funding to offset real estate tax increases, we need to know what that means and be very, very careful with how we vote on this. That's why I'm saying it's premature at this point. And I would really like to see you just hang on for a few weeks while we get these pieces put together. And that's okay. But what I have a problem with Linda is when Dan comes on here and says something like, well, we can charge six and something percent just because we need to catch up. That was the word that came out of his mouth at the time. And then I understand that town hall staff is advocating for a certain perspective, but Mm -hmm. I'm going to be the the bad guy here. And I'm going to say, that's not what the taxpayers want to hear. So I'll let the facts come out and we'll work it out. But you got to understand that the town hall perspective is not the only perspective. But you do want all the information first is what I'm, I would really I advise. And I, exactly. And I think we, with capital aside, we really attacked our most crucial points here right now with the water and sewer department. We've got major infrastructure issues that we need to pay for. And mm-hmm. they're in the millions of dollars, not just a little bit that we've, uh, produced with the $40 fee and the water fees and the sewer fees. So, you know, that federal money, there's a lot of it coming down the road. I gave it to Caroline. They're, they've got a five year infrastructure program that if they're going to give it to everybody, we really need to get a couple of these bigger projects in the works and, and not really shovel ready, but at least, uh, you know, uh, look at what we need underground here. You know, the sewer was built in 1964. The water was built in 1904. You know, the, this, the, there's some major work that needs to be done still. We, we've upgraded a lot of the water system, but our newest water system really, if you think about it, is 76. When they put the water line in and the water tanks on the south side of town and connected everything together. Yeah, I think when we're talking about tax increases, you really have to look at the whole picture. So we're not just looking at property taxes. We're looking at water and sewer and increasing. And with what uh, Mr. Okafer has put forward and what we need to do for water and sewer, you know, these are things that we need to take into consider and seriously think about how much each household basically can afford increases in water and sewer and their taxes alone. So it's really a combination of not just one tax base. We have other things that we increase also throughout the time. So let's all look at the total picture, not just one thing or the other. Yeah. You know, and and David uh, and the departments have been working on more of a regional look at the water sewer also, you know, Amherst, wants to get involved with our water because they need the water and they're also looking into our sewer to treat our sewer you know and it it could be a a good long regional outlook a 20-year outlook for both of our towns you know Mm -hmm. yeah we need to do that sooner rather than later yeah it's you know that's major it's a painstakingly slow process, unfortunately, when you know, I, I town know. government moves slow enough. But when you put two towns governments in there, it moves 10 times slower, unfortunately. Yeah. So. But we, Until somebody else desperately needs it. And that's the other ones on the other end of the nine, route nine. So exactly. You know, when something really needs to be pushed and shoved, we'll hear about it. Yeah. You know, I think it's a real good opportunity for us being a smaller town. I think we can benefit on both sides of this. And, and I also agree that Amherst can benefit on both sides of this also, you know? Yeah, we can. Absolutely. So we'll put it on the agenda next, uh, next the 28th. Um, and if we have the revenue reports, if you want to email them out to the board in the meantime, that'd be good. And we'll have a, we'll make sure we save a space for a good long discussion on the 28th. I think it is. Okay. So how can we afford to give water to Amherst if we have water bans in the summer because we're pumping to a certain percentage? So because we, have, we have the water, uh, Jane, 
but to put another treatment plant up at Mount Warner where the other two wells is, is quite an investment. It's probably going to be a $10 million investment. But if we sell the water to Amherst for X amount of, per gallon, you know, it'll, it'll pay for itself in a long run. And, and that's a major capital expenditure. How long are, how long we're not talking about that? a police cruiser or anything like this. You know, it, it, this is our, 20 or years on the road. Our water license allows us to take, uh, and don't quote me, but it's like 750,000 gallons a day out of the ground uh, at the Callahan Wells. Um, so the reason that we have the water restrictions is to make sure we stay under that cap. At some points last summer, we were at like 1.2 million gallons a day, way over the limit. Yeah. And the state will only let that slip for so long before they start, you know, putting yeah. restrictions. So what we had the iron uh, and the problems at Mount Warner, uh, each one of those pumps could pump a million gallons a day. And so if we bring Mount Warner back online, which we've been slowly working to, towards, we could add basically another million gallons a day onto our capacity, which would erase our water restriction problems and give us plenty that we could possibly sell to another adjoining town. So residents could water all they want. And then we water our residents, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we also, we did get money and grants for the station down on Bay Road, uh, there was some monies that came through which were very beneficial. And hopefully, like John was saying, with some federal money coming around or whatever, these would this would be the time to put out our wish list to uh, the senators and the House of Representatives of what we need uh, for our infrastructures and to get our applications in. Um, for these things too. So uh, something that we need, re really need to stay on top of, of getting in there and making sure we get our applications in. Yeah, I, I brought all that information. Caroline, have you looked into that, uh, that federal plan of what, what the just of that is? Or? So there's a lot of stuff that's coming down the road. There's, it's probably too complicated or too timely to go into it now. There's a lot of factors that impact many of those things that are coming through. Um, and I can get some of that information ready for you for the next meeting, but it is, I don't know how else to say it. It's much harder for Hadley in its, in its position right now than competing with other communities like Holyoke and Springfield. Um, and I can outline that for you. And I've been working a lot with the engineers, with Chris and with some of the, uh, with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, but I've also been working with the legislator staff. So um, I've already reached out to um, our federal legislator, or our two local ones to talk specifically about, you know that that's my focus right now is the water and sewer pipes for Route 9. Um, so that's what I, we, that's a critical issue right now that I'm working on. There are a lot of them. Honestly, it's very hard for me to be the expert to know what, you know, what exactly all of these projects are going to be. So I, we will have to rely on outsized consultants to look at some of that information. Um, but I can, I feel like I do need to present to you some of the challenges of why we haven't gotten grants and the reasons why. Um, and I'm willing to do that. It might not be in the next couple of weeks because we're working on that budget, but I think there's some helpful information for the board to have that can explain um, some of the challenges that Chris has had, um, as well as um, some of the grants that we haven't gotten in the past and why. Because we're too rich and we're not like Springfield and Holyoke. So there you go. So <laughs> Well, again, I'm going to say it. We, we'd rather raise the taxes, make the taxpayer pay a little bit more for a million and a half dollars than get grant funding for a $10 million water treatment plant. Is this what you're telling me, my financial team? Yeah, come on. You got your finger up soon. Let's hear okay. it. Okay. So what I'm telling you is a lot of these grants go to um, certain income level municipalities mm -hmm. there are so many different aspects of this john that 
Okay, so uh, our tax rate is $12. And I'm quite certain when our grants hit the desk, they go, $12, let them charge more. Sorry, mm -hmm. that's how it works. And, yeah. and John, some of the key issues are, is we, you, you have to have a project construction ready. So you have to have the engineers in place with their ready to go out to construction. Yeah. We don't have that. That's what's hard. And that is something I was going, that we may be placing on the warrant to get some of this, these engineering documents done by the consultants, but yeah. that will cost money. Yeah. And so many of these projects are not bid ready. And, and Amherst has helped us a little bit with some of the issues that we have. But as I said, if we have a regional thing between Amherst and Hadley and some kind of an agreement, maybe they'd look at it a little different if two communities went into this together. This is what and, I'm trying to and say. And we actually had a meeting today about it, but as David said, it moves very slowly. So it, you may not be seeing it on the front line, but it's happening behind the scenes. Um, but like David said, it is slow, but we actually had a meeting on that today. Okay. Right. So uh, we'll make sure that this is on the agenda for the 28th and we'll leave plenty of time so we can talk all about budget and uh, give some better guidance on things for the finance committee. Um, and then we'll wait on the grants, I think, until after town meeting, because I know we're real busy with the budgets and town meeting anyway, so we probably don't have the, the bandwidth to take on the grant writing at the same time. Uh, unless you think otherwise, Carolyn, that's something that could be done before. Grant writing for these projects? Yeah, what I'm saying is uh, we don't need to have the grant discussion now because we need to focus on town meeting, I think, and the, the budget instead of the, the grant issues, right? Yes, and there's very, we don't have a lot because you usually do your um, capital uh, projects in this uh, fall, but we do have, we do have especially the Route 9 one. But again, there's multiple grants. So multiple, there's not just one. Um, so that again is part of, you don't have, you don't have that one professional that is able to look at all of those grants who understands all of those capital, those are uh, capital are infrastructure issues. So it's more than just looking at one grant and trying to write a grant before, you know, within a certain timeline. It, there's so many other issues um, that impact that. So I don't know enough about this, but is there is there such thing as, um, I know you can hire professional grant writers and things like that. Is there like a uh, grant headhunter type position where they get a percentage of grants that they win for us, something that would encourage them to actually you know, pursue these and, and something that we could arrange so that way that, I, I don't know. I mean, how do you find somebody that's motivated to start winning these for the town? Typically, it's difficult to get one grant writer to do a whole array of different um, infrastructures, or I'm sorry, different projects, because there's infrastructure. There's so many other um, grants that are available to help a municipality. There could be an IT grant. There could be, um, you know, uh, to look at efficiencies or things like that. So there definitely are consultants out there, but they will cost money. You have to pay for those consultants. Um, most of them um, will help write the grant knowing that they're gonna get a, a portion of it, but you still have to have some upfront costs and you have to identify, I think that part of what you have with your goals and objectives tonight is to look, I, I think you need, the, the board needs to prioritize what area in Hadley needs to get focused on as far as capital expenses and funding. And that's how you would start to pursue a grant writer. I can tell you though, just watching all of the, the emails that come in from other communities, everybody's struggling to find that, that person. It, it's not very easy in municipal government it, with a municipal, municipal focus. Yeah. Have, we, have we tapped UMass at all for anybody doing their thesis or doctorate or anything on that that um, is looking to expand on the horizons for uh, government? No, a lot of the engineering firms, some of the engi engineering firms specifically do water, specifically yep. do sewer, specifically do conservation. You know, yeah, I've been meeting with them, John. They're all, they're all specialties. They're not general grant writing. 
Uh, John, yes. I, I asked a question about UMass, if there was anybody available over there. Usually a student who's doing their thesis already has something in mind. Okay. And if it's not specific to a need for Hadley or any community, it can be very difficult. I've, I have reached out throughout my career and worked with interns. Honestly, in many cases, unless you have a complete you're in line with the same project that that student is, it is a ton of extra work for the employees. So it would really have to be that perfect match. Linda, you were waiting to say something? Uh, PVPC is a possibility. They do um, some grant writing and I don't know what the uh, basis is. I don't know how they charge or you know whether it's a percentage or whether, whether it's flat application. I was just checking with Bill. They had them do a grant for a uh, planning board uh, for a while ago. So um, that kind of a service, and I don't know what there might be through the county. We're counties. actually working with Pioneer Valley. Yep, and I'm yeah. getting some free service from them, but we would, because we already pay Pioneer Valley Planning Commission to help with planning board. They also mm -hmm. help with some projects with Chris, but we reach our max. And so anything in addition, we would have to, we would have to pay for, which we can do, but you'd still have to pay for those services. But, and I'm already working on right. two projects with them. Right. I, I think they, as opposed to someone that you just hired to, uh, to do grants, because they do so much of it, I think they'd have a good sense of whether we really had um, a shot at a grant before they put in the effort and put in the application. That's why I'd like, I like the idea of dealing with someone who really um, has, has a good idea of, of the entire field. So, yeah, I mean, that's just another possibility. Okay. Well, we'll save, we'll save plenty of time next meeting to talk about the budget and then we'll uh, have a budget, uh, grant conversation down the road as well. So, um, Amy, you got anything? To no, thank you for your input on all that. I appreciate it. Okay. Sue, did you have something else? No, oh, okay. All right, anything else on budgets before we move on? Okay. Uh, last item I have is goals and objectives. Um, so I put a list on there and for the people that aren't uh, on board docs, I have the sale of North Hadley Village Hall actually finishing that. Um, the transfer station contract, because there's a lot of unhappiness with the current transfer station arrangement. So finding a, a better solution. The landfill solar project that we voted on two or three years ago, I believe to authorize for an RFP to get that out there. So hopefully we can generate some revenue for the town. And I have a Russell School decision. And so we can stop kicking that down the road. Uh, Goodwin remodel, remodeling process or progress. Um, I know the municipal building committee, this is this is uh, all for Joyce right here. Uh, municipal building committee had some plans and, and uh, the architect was working on it, but, but what do we need to do so we can start actually moving forward on that? Uh, building maintenance plans or contractors. We have three new buildings. How do we take care of them? How do we maintain them? Do we need to hire contractors? Uh, you know, service plans. I know the senior center was looking at service plans or service contracts for maintaining equipment. Uh, we need to finish that. Uh, finishing some capital projects. One of the bad habits we've had for quite some time is we carry over a lot of capital money in accounts for multiple years. So for the most part, I'd like to make it a goal that we have a clean slate at the end of the year. So everything is, is you know, a, as much as possible, we finish the, pro the contract or the, the projects that we start in a particular of the year, and we're not carrying this funds for, uh, these funds from year to year. And the last thing is a legal contract. Um, I think we need to look at better cheaper options for law firms. We pay, I don't know, Carolyn, do you have any idea how much money we pay in a, so far in the year to-, to Our attorney work? fees, uh, we're averaging, a, a, a bad month is about 4,000, a good month is about 25, 2,500. And I've seen, we had one month when it was North, during the North Hadley Village Hall that it was close to 5,000. So it's a, it's a lot of money. So I'd like to look at some better options for 
law, law firms or legal services and maybe something that provides a little better uh, customer service aspect as well. So this is not, you know, an all encompass, un encompassing list. So if you have other op options, other items you would like to add to that list, throw them out there. You want them now? Yeah, if you just have some, I mean, we can keep adding to them, but I just, these are some kind of things that were hanging around. So if you have anything else you want to add onto there? I do. I want to, for us to look at our ambulance service, our contract is going to be coming up. And I also would like us to try to initiate uh, a BL, BLS uh, ambulance, which it would just be a standard. It's not an ALS uh, paramedic ambulance that we use for uh, critical things, but sometimes uh, we're in a position where we could uh, be able to uh, operate and earn money from just a BLS ambulance. So, so that would be something that I would like to also put on the agenda. Uh, we've talked about it over the years. I think I have been on an ambulance committee since I was on school committee. Um, so these are things that we have been kicking around for over 30 years. Um, we're at the point now where at least we have an ambulance that is in our bay uh, and able to do a quick response um, to our residents. Um, that has worked out really well. Um, but then we'd like to move it a little bit more forward. So um, I'd like that on the agenda for us to uh, complete this year and, and look into more. Okay, we'll add it to the list. Anybody else have anything else? Well, like I said, we'll concentrate a little bit more on, on our infrastructure, you know, with the water and sewer, uh, along with uh, a regional thing with Amherst, which we're, which would just be continuing, you know, and see where we're at with it. I don't know. I, I know it's been over a year now that we've been dealing with them, so it's it's not a fast process, any of these things, so. Yeah, it's uh, what we're what I'm finding is that the form of government in Amherst is very different than Hadley, where there's only five of us and we have pretty open conversations. Uh, their town council is just extremely slow in, in getting business done. There's a long process to get something in front of the in front of the town council. So it's 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 tough. So. I think one of the things also I know we have finished our projects. Um, the three buildings, but we also only have a year uh, from my remembrance of doing other buildings in town. We have a year to complete our punch list and make sure that everything is covered. And I want to make sure that we come under our warranty uh, with everything that has been put into the building. So I would like everybody on their buildings um, to be aware of this and make sure that um, we keep an eye out for anything that needs to be checked, redone. Um, making sure everything is where it is. So I'll be talking to Mike about North Hadley because there was a couple of things I had questions on. Um, I don't know if Jane, you have anything on your building or if yeah, the library the, does. The library and the senior center are both waiting for the RFP to go out on solar. That's a big piece of both of our buildings, especially the library that gets $100,000 back when they get that completed. Okay. And the savings that the senior center will have in the long term for the town is worthwhile doing it. So we need to get yeah. the RFPs out. Do you, know if, do you know if it's only going to cost $100,000 on the senior center? I mean, I'm sorry, on the uh, library? I have no idea. We haven't put out RFPs to see anything. Okay. We're waiting for that. And, you know, we can't close off those budgets into because both buildings are saying this is part of our budget and we need to mm -hmm. do it. Okay. I, I think the last time the library talked with us was, was uh, there, that was ma uh, matching funds or, or a portion of the funds for theirs, that 100000 The $100,000 was going to be partial payment for theirs, yes. No. That's what I thought. But it also, um, they have, when you have a building that's certified energy efficient, you pay more to have it designed that way and certified, just like an organic farmer pays more to grow the same things that somebody next door could use the same uh, methods, but to have that formal 
uh, designation, it costs money, which is one of the reasons the senior center has a very efficient building, but didn't pay the extra money. We didn't either at the North Hadley Hall, but we turned our money into uh, making sure that there is, uh, uh, what's, what's the word I want to use, everybody? My mind fiber is going blank. Fiber optics. Fiber, optic. fiber optics through all of our town buildings so that we're all on the same page. So we spent our money on um, all the other buildings, the senior center, library, school, town hall, and our other uh, building on East Street, just to make sure we're all on fiber optic and which benefited the whole town. So that's what we did with our extra money. All right, anything else for this list? I got the, the solar and ambulance. No, okay. Um, we, I skipped over, we need to close the warrant. So if I could get a motion to close the warrant, please. Motion to close the warrant. Oh. Are we going to talk about the list that was on board docs today of the order of articles and what they are? No. That is what I did, uh, Jane, if that's okay, David, if I can just address that. Um, yeah. That is a list of the articles that are on the warrant. There's no explanation of it right now. We still, we still have to work on all of the wording and I have to get more information for um, certain articles. So I wanted to just show you that this, that is the list of how many articles and what's on it. And um, to you, it didn't come out and highlight, but the first 12 articles are the, I'm sorry, the first 10 articles are the ones that we uh, wanted to put from uh, the fall, I'm sorry, yeah, the fall town meeting that didn't get addressed. Yeah, they were coming first this time. So they're, they're, they're on first. Correct. Hey, oh. With, with all the programs that are out there, are we still doing that rental thing or not? That's on the agenda for us to talk about. That's one right. of the that's one of the uh, articles. We're on state programs out there right now. And it was, well, I, I think no we need idea. more. I think we need more information on it, and we can address that. I think at the next meeting, don't you? Yep, we can we can talk about that at the next meeting. Um, but as far as the, the warrant goes, I think, Joyce, did you say motion to close? Yes. Okay, so I need a second. I'll second. All right, second by John. Jennifer? Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. Sorry, roll call vote, Phil? Yes. <laughs> One more time, I'm so sorry. Roll call vote, Phil. Yes. <laughs> So sorry. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Miskevitz? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. Thank you. All right. And Amy, uh, in the chat, uh, a couple things to follow up on real quick before I move on. Uh, money for a study to redo the DPW, that is still on the books. It hasn't been done yet. Correct, Carolyn? That's... Yes. Okay. So that, that also needs to be done. Um, what else did you say, Amy? Uh, oh, the employee study, the wage study. Um, my understanding is that wage study was not very good, that we got <clears throat> not very useful. So I know that there's an internal group working on some solutions, right, Carolyn? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, we kind of have to reaccomplish that, it looks like, unfortunately. All right, anything else? We have executive session, two of them tonight. So before we do that, any announcements tonight? I don't, I'll have to do them at the end of the month. Anybody else? Oh, Sue. Uh, demands for excise bills that were due April 1st are going out tomorrow. So if you haven't paid your excise yet, uh, get it in the Dropbox tomorrow by noon. All right. Any other announcements? 
All right, so we have an executive session. Uh, first one is contract negotiations for the human resources director and contract negotiations, police union, DPW union. Um, let's see, so I gotta read both of these, I believe to be official. So the select board will enter into executive sessions per MGL chapter 30A, section 21A2 to conduct uh, strategy sessions and preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, the human resources director. And then I'll read this other one. The select board will enter into executive session per the provisions of MGL chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares, police union, DPW union. Uh, so could I have a motion please to enter executive session? So moved. In a second. Second. All right, motion by Joyce, second by Jane. Uh, as chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded to enter into executive session. And uh, I state that discussing the matters in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley and we will not reconvene in open session. Roll call vote. Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Chungalo? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. Muscovitz? Yes. And Parsons. Yes. Thank you.